Okay. <coughs> this is a meeting of the High Park Central School District Board of Ed on February 27th, 2020. Can I have a motion to enter executive session to discuss the employment of a particular person or corporation and collective negotiations pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? We're now in the executive session. <clears throat> so welcome to the Board of Ed meeting <coughs> for High Park Central School District. This is Feb February 27th of 2020. Can we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pompsy twins here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a little computer problem. Me too. Okay, upcoming events on February 28th, that's tomorrow. The District STEAM Expo and Science Fair is at FDR High School from 4 to 6 p.m. On Thursday, March 12th, there's a Senior Luncheon and Spring mus Musical, The Adams Family. That's at FDR High School at 11 a.m. On Thursday, March 12th, the Wizards Basketball Game, FDR High School, that starts at 6 p.m. The next Board of Ed meeting will be on March 12th at Netherwood Elementary School at 7 p.m. On Friday, March 13th, and Saturday, March 14th, at 7 p.m., the Spring Musical, The Adams Family, at FDR High School, and then a Sunday matinee at 2 p.m. What? I got the next board meeting on it. Oh. I just realized. Okay. We have one um, one agenda modification. Adding motion 1110, motion to amend the date of the resignation for Elliot Garcia, Director of Equity and Human Resources in the Human Relations Department to be effective the close of business March 27th, 2020. Mr. Garcia has been in the district since January 2013. And I have a motion to, to amend the agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. <coughs> and on, oh, can I have a motion to adopt, adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Question. Who? Thank you. And six, Denise is not here. Okay, on to Pride. Okay, so uh, starting with Haviland, they're showing a documentary called Screenagers Next Chapter, um, in which the students from 6th through 12th grade and their families can learn about uh, stress resilience on March 19th at 6.30 in the auditorium. The film will talk about mental health related aspects of social media, video games, and just like the general use of electronics amongst teenagers. And it will also provide ways for parents to help teens kind of develop develop a resiliency to the stressors that all of this might cause in their lives. And afterwards, uh, various mental health agencies from our community will have tables set up and will be providing information um, and resources and kind of answering questions whenever there are. 
And then in FDR, um, the boys swim team had four people qualify for states. Kush Patel qualified in the 100 backstroke. Robert Reining qualified in four events, the 100, 200, and 50 freestyle. And he also qualified in the medley relay with Patel, uh, Daniel Berger, and Ryan Spear. So that's really amazing. And then Sources of Strength is wrapping up uh, February's Love Yourself campaign. It was asked that the students send in photos of things that make them feel good about themselves. And then these photos were put up uh, in front of the library on a wall um, with like, little hearts. And it kind of really promotes self-love, which is really critical to mental health and like keeping uh, students stable. And then also the basketball team has an upcoming game this Monday at 7 p.m. And the girls are on before them. And they'll be playing against Burke Catholic High School. And as mentioned, Harlem Wizards will be back on Thursday, March 12th, to play against the Hyde Park Bad Apples. And the doors open at 6 p.m. The game starts at 7. And it's $12 for students, 14 for adults. But there are tickets on sale online right now. Um, and then yesterday, after school, uh, the Black History Month, there was a Black History Month celebration held in the library. And it was just so amazing to see all the students come out. And the library was filled. Like, all the chairs filled, students standing up back to back. Uh, and it was one of the students, Danielle Foster, read one of her poems called Hidden, Fig Hidden Figures. And uh, her, along with Kayla Anderson, hosted a trivia and an important figures presentation. And then the FDR step team also had an amazing performance. And afterwards, the students were invited to come up and try all this different, all these foods that they had uh, provided for us. So it was just really, really amazing to see the turnout. And I was really, really happy that we got to have this after all, even though it got canceled during the school day. So that was really awesome. Is there any other pride? Sure. Um, Tuesday was uh, uh, middle school pops concert. Um, it was. Uh, conducted the way I really like it because the students actually sat in the in the auditorium they cordoned off one third of it so that the students could watch their fellow students actually play and I thought that was really great and uh, it was uh, all the bands six seventh and eighth and it was over in 32 minutes so uh, uh, if anybody <laughs> uh, uh, says, you know, well, I don't want to go to a thing, they're too long, uh, but we're not. So, uh, and it was very good. They did, a, they did a terrific job. Any other? Yeah, I, and I have a follow-up to uh, Rachel's in one minute, and then we have some formal pride coming up. Um, but uh, I don't think, but we hosted the gymnastics sectionals this year, and uh, we have three girls going to states, Emma, Grace, and Clara. It was a wonderful event, well attended, and um, it was just great to see our girls shining. Um, we, the town of Hyde Park was visited, as you know, the uh, town of Hyde Park and our school district has an adopted ship, the USS Roosevelt. Uh, it is uh, stationed down in Florida. And they had the ensign of the ship visiting Dutchess County and specifically Hyde Park this past weekend. There were a few ceremonies. Um, and. Uh, Dan Kuffner, who uh, former HPTA person and president, dropped off a signed autograph from Ensign Skaggs uh, for our school district in recognition of Project Fala and all of the uh, things that our students do to support the servicemen and women on the USS Roosevelt. Um, Back to the Black History Month celebration. I couldn't, I, I missed it. I was, uh, you know, things get crazy. And, um, but Emily Curcio, the staff member who really coordinates this and is one of the <coughs> club advisors, the step club advisor, sent me some videos. So, and you mentioned the one that I chose to show. So Jay queued up for us the spoken word. Uh, it's just it's just one poem, so it's just one piece of the Black History celebration. And I thought it was really worth showing during Pride. There are also uh, the other clips are some other spoken word and the step team. But I'll, we'll just show the one poem. It was. It really. Thank you for your attention. 
hidden We're figures. We have a word spoken poem written and performed by our very own talented Danielle Foster. <laughs> Dear hidden figures whom we cannot see, your contributions mean the world to me. Undisclosed, behind closed doors, you've done way more than we give credit for. Page by page in this history book, I can't find your name no matter how hard I look. And when I'm in class, I never hear your name. The people they showcase are always the same. Not to say that they haven't made strides, but come on, it's 2020. Don't you think it's time? Let's take a moment to honor and name some unsung heroes who paved the way. Inoculation vaccination was introduced by a slave. Onesimus was his name. Think of all the people he saved. Bessie Coleman, licensed pilot, flew high in the sky. Why I never hear her name? I need to open my eyes. Ella Baker was an activist right by MLK's side. We must shout her name, big and loud, far and wide. And Shirley Chisholm, I see you repping Brooklyn in the House of Representatives. That is, you let them know what we're about. Dear hidden figures whom we cannot see, you fought this struggle from A to Z. So many more of your names need to be uncovered. These textbook pages are missing your color, red, orange, and purple, and green. It is our mission to make sure you are seen. Through high tides and calm waters, we acknowledge your strives. And because of your work, you bettered our lives. Thank you. Thank you. Hidden, hidden fingers. And now on to our formal pride. Uh, we have a student recognition. And with here to help us uh, recognize Justin Johnson is Dr. Hooley from Duchess Boses, his principal, Melissa Murphy from Swell Point Center, his teachers and staff members, and his parents. So <laughs> take it away. Really, and uh, just, just to uh, frame this for everybody, these are awards that um, our three educational, four educational programs um, identify students who are just doing great. Um, this from Salt Point Center, also from CTI, our Career and Tech Institute, our in-district program, and our um, uh, alternative high school. So really, over the course of uh, nine or ten months, we really only have three students identified from Salt Point Center. So this is a very big privilege for Justin. And um, it's a nice reminder that your students are our students, and our students are your students. And with that, I'll turn it over to Melissa. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm sorry. Um, so Justin, come here. <laughs> Miss Reed, Miss Reed's teacher, Miss Norton, his TA, Daphna Niger, Aster, site supervisor at Salt Point Center, and Leslie is come. You guys come up. Yep. Yeah. Just yeah. No, you can't. You have to turn this way. Okay. So, so I'm just gonna embarrass Justin a little bit right now because um, I would tell you another story, but he. You can, yeah, just come here, just come here. You can look at this. So Justin is a responsible, respectful, and reliable young man. He's a good friend to others. He is sensitive as, of his peers and adults. Justin seems serious, but he's really sarcastic. And getting to know him, he's always positive and willing to help his peers, right? Justin is, um, is a student that on the surface you, he would appear as a, any seventh grader. However, he's overcome tremendous obstacles to arrive here today. And I always knew this guy was special, and the other day he again proved it. At Salt Point Center we have something called weekly shout outs. Anyone can give a student or staff member recognition for doing something great. Every Friday in the morning we read a handful of staff shout outs and in the afternoon we read a handful of student shout outs. Those students are able to come down and pick something from the prize box. So in, in many other weeks, Justin received a shout out from somebody for doing something excellent. So it's being a good citizen, completing all of his work, something that's just really remarkable. When Justin came down to the prize box, I was standing there. He took a few minutes, he looked inside. It's nothing spectacular, starburst, keychains, everything from the Dollar Tree. And after a few seconds, he stuck his hand in and pulled out a fuzzy pink mermaid tail king ring, key ring. And I immediately knew that he picked his prize, not for himself, but 
for his mother because that's just how caring Justin is. So Justin, besides you telling Ms. Reed that the work is going to kill you, which it hasn't yet, your academic achievements are also impressive. We at Duchess Boses are proud of you and your progress, accomplishments, and you should be too. Justin, you are the definition of resilient, and we love seeing your smiling face. Thank you for sharing justice, Justin with us at Bosey's, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to give this to Justin today, a public shout out. So with that, Salt Point Center is happy to honor Justin Johnson as our student of distinction for February 2020. Congratulations. Wait, wait, Justin. <laughs> Congratulations. Cool. <laughs> Is there any more pride? So now we'll move on to superintendent's report. Yeah, just one item. Um, the Lower Hudson Council of School Superintendents, which encompasses four counties, Westchester, Dutchess, Rockland, and uh, Putnam, um, have collectively endorsed Dr. Fran Wills for the open seat on the Board of Regents for New York State. Uh, Dr. Wills is a former superintendent. Um, she worked in multiple districts. She has the utmost integrity and in every community that she worked in, uh, she really worked on building a collaborative culture and embraced her community in being part of the planning and um, uh, both programmatically and community-wise and really opening up the platform for everybody's voices in her communities. And she repeatedly did that in every district um, that she worked in. So for those reasons, we collectively um, endorsed the candidacy of Dr. Fran Wills, she's, she's just Fran, um, but uh, so uh, we actually sent letters to our uh, assembly member, Dee Dee Barrett, and um, Senator Sue Serino, so uh, I wish Fran the best of luck. I think she would be phenomenal in the open seat on the New York State Board of Regents. Next up, budget update. Assistant Superintendent Linda Seinberg. Hi, um, good evening. So, um, oops. I don't know how to get to the. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know how to get to Thanks the beginning. Like, this is starting with number yeah. three. Thank you so much. I think that it Thank was you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. You too. You make it small. It was slightly more. I think it might be on the. It might be in board docs. Yeah. It was on. Yeah. So. Um, the slide that's up here is the third slide in the presentation, so I'll just start from the, be the beginning. Um, I think it's in board docs. We have a, s a couple of slides, actually, uh, about the tax cap and then also for our expenditures. So um, you may remember at the last meeting, I gave you some scenarios for the tax cap. So thank you for uh, guiding me. Um, we have the final tax cap presentation now. Um, we're coming through at a 2.21% uh, increase. Um, that is a little bit different than the scenario that we showed last time. It, um, we were thinking we'd be at 2.36 um, with the exclusions for capital. Um, we did uh, tweak that a little bit based on information that we got from Bernie Donegan's office. So. Right now, we're showing that our um, tax levy increase, which is also on this slide too, um, our total tax levy would be $63,282 um, under the um, current calculation, which is a 2.21% increase. Um, 
So the tax cap calculation or the tax cap submission to New York State is due on Monday. Um, I'll be submitting it tomorrow after this meeting. Uh, the board doesn't need to formally approve it. I just usually don't submit it until I present it here. So um, in total, our um, total budget for next year, as we are right now, which is not the final version, um, is $103,189,000. That's a $4.4 million increase, or 4.51%. Um, you may remember the last presentation was just the rollover presentation, which was assuming everything would be the same next year, except for um, known increases for salaries and benefits. This uh, budget presentation takes into account the uh, request that we received from the administrators, too. Um, we are still working with the administrators on the budget. There's at least three more meetings that we have with them before we will have our final numbers. So um, you can't see on the screen, hopefully you can on your, on your computers, but um, of the total expenditures, which also match the uh, revenues you see here, the 103 million, um, the biggest increases right now are in BOCES. We're showing uh, over $2 million increase in BOCES, but that includes our uh, capital project payment of 1.56 million. So that accounts for most of that increase. Um, and then the other area that shows the largest or large increase is in employee benefits. Um, the increase we're showing right now is $1.3 million. Most of that is for um, health insurance and for the pension cost. Um, the TRS rate, which is the rate that we pay to the teacher's retirement system for all certified staff, in, is increasing from about 8.8% to 9.5% next year and that does have a, a big toll on our um, budget. We don't have the final numbers yet for the budget for health insurance. We'll have that before the next meeting, <coughs> but right now I'm projecting a 5% increase. Okay, so for the revenues, um, as I just mentioned on here, the um, amount that we're projecting for the tax levy is listed here, the 63.2 million, so the 2.21% increase. Um, the state aid numbers are from the governor's uh, projected, or you know, the governor's budget. Um, in total, we can expect about $1.18 million increase. Um, the next slide does have the detail of that information broken down. We'll get our final numbers for the state aid by the end of March, hopefully, if the state um, legislative budget comes through on time. So usually um, every year since I've been doing the budget, that number increases a little bit. Uh, so then, oh, the new revenue is the bond anticipation note. So that's to cover the cost of the BOCES capital payment. We had talked about that last time about borrowing for it rather than paying cash as it would have a, a better effect for us for our tax cap. And the fund balance appropriation number, that's really the budget gap. That's the difference between what we can expect to receive in revenues and what our, uh, our expenses are. Um, that number is a little too high. That's why we're still working with the administrators to bring down the total expense budget. If we left the fund balance appropriation at three and a half million, our unassigned fine balance would probably fall a little bit to about two and a quarter percent. And that's the fund balance amount where we are legally allowed to stay at 4%. So um, here we have the detail of the state aid. And, um, like I said earlier, this is based on the governor's proposal. We won't have the final numbers until um, the end of March. Uh, everything on here, except for foundation aid and the high tax aid, are really um, based on expenses. We pretty much know exactly how much we're going to spend on our debt service, so our building aid number is a good number. Um, the other uh, aids could change slightly based on what we spend for areas that qualified for those aids. Um, we are currently researching the change in the BOCES aid. You can see that's a, a large increase of $480,000, but uh, the business office at BOCES is actually helping me look into that to determine where that, uh, where that projection comes from to see if the numbers are accurate. But overall right now we can expect a 1.184 increase in our state aid, which is 3.89%.
So we are required to show the uh, budget in its three components, which is program, admin, and capital. I usually don't show the information for program, admin, and capital until later in the budget season when we have uh, more concrete and final numbers. The reason we're showing this now is uh, typically our admin budget had been under 10%, um, but we are required by New York State to classify the payment to BOCES for the capital project as an administrative expense. So because we have that included in here, our admin costs are high for Hyde Park at 11.4%. Um, I expect that in 21-22 it'll also be high, but after we make the final payments for the BOCES capital project, that should come down. Um, this is the same slide that we looked at at the last presentation. It's actually from last year when we were talking about the BOCES capital project then. I just wanted to update it to show that we paid cash for the first payment that we made for the uh, BOCES capital project in July of 2019, and we'll be financing the uh, capital project for the next two years. So in uh, July, we owe the $1.56 million, and in July of 2021, our final payment will be $1.2 million. So even though we're financing it, we actually do have the expense in the budget and we have the revenue from the ban to offset it. All right, so um, that's all I have for uh, the presentation now. The next meeting will be a presentation from George. He'll talk about the bus proposition. Um, I'll be presenting a more detailed uh, budget at the second meeting in March, on March 26th. That'll be my long presentation. It will sh we'll show all of our changes, um, the additions and the subtractions from the budget. We'll show the breakdown of the individual codes into program admin capital, and we'll have some more detail on um, the specific um, the this, this detail of the expenses and the, the revenues in that presentation. So, are there any questions at this point? I, I, don't, I don't have a question, but I think um, we should start saying that the budget vote will be a paper ballot that people, so people get used to the idea that we don't have the machines this year because of uh, primaries. Um, not, none of the districts in Dutchess County have the machines this year, so everybody's doing a paper ballot. I don't want that to be a surprise, and I think we should say that every time we do Yeah, and I think, I, didn't, I think it's on the agenda. Later on in the agenda under board discussion, um, we have a couple of details that we want to talk about related to that as well. Okay. Absolutely. The more we can get it out that it's going to be different. Uh, and only different for Dutchess County. And only different for Dutchess County, not we not for lack special. of effort. <laughs> yes, with, uh, we are. <laughs> so two two questions. One, um, so I know that we're over the ten percent on our capital, our percentage for yeah. capital, um, and it's driven by the payment to, for the BOCES capital mm -hmm. project. Do you have a number as to what it would be if it were not for yeah. that? So I calculated it with, with this budget right here, and it came out as 10%. <laughs> exactly. It comes out exactly yeah. 10%. But that okay. will change, too, because we are looking at our our um, our budget, and the budget itself will change. We, will there were some, up. yeah, there were right, some of the, yeah. yeah, there were some of the, in the past, there were some um, expenses for special education that we included in program, but for some of the um, expenses in their office, we had to move that into um, administrative, and that was based on the on the building-based budgeting that we're required to do now. And the same, we had the same effect with some of our uh, technology expenses. In the past, all of that was in program, but we did have to move some of it into administrative okay. because of the building-based budgeting. Yeah. The parts of those that we don't allocate to the buildings have to be classified as administrative. In that okay. program, and, I, and is it a guideline that it that it's to you know considered to be at ten percent or less, or is no, it's no. just it's just historical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For Hyde Park, I I don't really know what what the average is. Okay. Yeah. And I think the important point that you know is that the new way that we've been asked to identify things in the budget that admin uh, there is a misnomer that that's administrators or right. people and more and more when Cuomo changed it to the school-based budgeting things that are actually program or technology 
uh, or services are now called administrative. So while we yeah, for they, years yeah. said, watch that needle, you don't want to go over 10% yeah. in the administrative portion, it's not even defined the same way. Right, so they just we just changed the formula. Yeah, we had a double whammy in that the capital, a capital project, you know, bricks mm -hmm. and mortar is now called, for BOCES, now had to be called an administrative cost. And as Linda just said, both uh, some items in special education and technology now by the new definitions had to be moved over so yeah. the game has changed yeah mm -hmm. and really like in the guidance for the building based budgeting um it doesn't state that this should be program or, or admin, but it will tell us which account code to use. And then there's other guidance that says which account codes like are program yeah. or admin. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just one other, um, to clarify, this budget is within the yes. tax cap. Yes, this we budget are, is we within, are the within the tax cap. Within the tax cap. Mm -hmm. yep. It's, yep. Yes. And it will change the next time you see it. We're still right. working right. on right. it. But yeah. the point is we are staying within yeah. the mandated yeah. tax cap yeah. uh, <coughs> going forward. Right. Yep. So even when we, when we change the budget, the tax levy, uh, $63.2 million, that will stay the same. Um, we'll see the changes in the fund balance appropriation. We'll see mm -hmm. that go down. So we okay. won't be relying as much on fund balance to yeah. to cover next year's yeah, budget. I think after how many years of the tax cap, it's still very difficult for people to understand. Yeah. But the, I think it's clear for us to state that yeah. if this this budget is within the tax cap. Yeah, and I guess not having the tax cap slide up here threw me off a little bit. Um, everyone, well, people may know that the CP, the change in CPI for last year was less than 2%. It was 1.81%. Mm -hmm. But because of other exclusions that we have for the tax cap, our tax cap, uh, for Hyde Park is actually 2.2 percent. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Linda. Okay. Thank you. At this time, can I have a motion for public participation? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. At this time, if you would like to come and address the board, please go to the microphone and state your name. Public participation is limited to three minutes per person. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Tibbetts, and I'm hoping to um, run for the seat that I understand may be opening on this body uh, next year. So rather than just have my name show up on a ballot and you all wonder who is this guy, I thought I'd just take two and a half minutes now to uh, introduce myself. <laughs> so I've been in the district for about 20 years now. I still have one child in the system. She's a Haviland eighth grader. Um, I've been an educator myself for 28 years now. I'm a uh, faculty member in the biology department at Bard College. And my wife was <clears throat> in the school finances up until three years ago when she retired to run our small farm. So I'm sort of very interested and excited about being part of something that's involved in education. I've heard that this body functions very, very well. And so with a little bit of luck, I would be very honored to join you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> would anybody else like to address the board? Seeing none, public participation is now closed. And would anybody like to address? First, I would say, I'm glad someone's running. I appreciate it. <laughs> and, and I'll add that after 17 years, I'm going off the board, so it's an open seat. So you may not even be running against anybody. Well, that's the reason I was actually going to run, because I didn't want to bump anybody off. Cause I no, no. <laughs> We like a little competition, actually. I mean, I, I would always encourage there to be, I'd, I'd love to see more candidates than, uh, than positions. It gives the public an opportunity to make a decision, and I think that's important. And I would just like to say thank you. I'm glad that you hear good things about our board, because I'm very proud of it. I think we, we work really hard, and we work very cooperatively, and, you know, and, and you know, we, we do really try very hard, so I'm happy to hear that maybe some some of that's rubbing off. Maybe some people see it. I can say I met Mike about a week and a half ago and was very impressed. And I was the one who told him the board functions very well, so keep me honest. Yeah, that is that is true. You, you can't have those two next to each other. Who? <laughs> really? Okay, there we go. You started. Okay, next is board discussion. 
up on board discussions? Uh, are we talking about the hand count? Hmm. Yes. So, uh, Jay, I want, first I want to give a shout out to Jay. Um, she's done an absolutely amazing job, um, both independently with all the area district clerks, with Linda, and then uh, and then even uh, with myself sitting down on a on a fairly regular basis to be told that we will not have machines to tally the votes is no small um, job to arrange. And um, I am confident that even though we are moving to a paper ballot, we have a system um, that will be in place um, that is reliable um, and manageable. Uh, after several iterations, uh, Jay has come up with something that uh, is the envy of many other district clerks uh, and um, it will require a couple of things. It will require more staff at the vote. As you know, at the end of the evening, um, people who have been working the polls are extremely tired, um, and they're generally the people who count the votes. And what Jay proposed and we support <coughs> is that we have a set of people come in who count the votes who haven't been there since 6 a.m. in the morning. So. Uh, she has orchestrated the staffing stations and the counting stations in such a way that it will be clean and manageable. Um, she's ordered some of the resources. She designed the ballot form. She has worked with the attorneys to make sure that all of this is ballot forms good. In, in, in keeping and legal. Uh, we did try one thing uh, to have something perforated because there'll be uh, Proposition 1, Proposition 2, and then board member vote, but we're not allowed to have shads and tads, so we couldn't do anything perforated. But um, the other thing that that really leads to is not only will the experience at the poll be different, um, we are going to need additional time at the end of the evening. So we are proposing that we end the vote at 8 o'clock. Uh, this is similar to what other districts are uh, contemplating right now because of the need to hand count all of the votes. And then Jay graciously provided you with a couple of charts. Uh, the one question was, if we close the polls an hour early, what would the impact of the voters be? And what you have is a chart in front of you that indicates that for the last two years, between the hours of 8 and 9 o'clock at night, we had one voter two years ago and one voter last year. So we do not feel that closing the polls one hour um, earlier will negatively impact uh, our tally or impede anyone's uh, access to the polling station. Um, is Aviva down there? Thanks to Aviva, we are open at 6 a.m. in the morning. I, I heard that was <laughs> my idea like 18 years ago <laughs> to open early because yeah. most districts start at mm -hmm. noon and that just isn't great for working people. But so. it, it, when we look at the people who do show up before work, that, that was a win. So thank you, Aviva. <laughs> so um, <coughs> uh, again, we have to have a board meeting that night to announce the results. So uh, closing the polls at 8 o'clock uh, might get us out before midnight. Mm. No, hopefully before <laughs> that. But um, so hand counting, we need more staff. We would like to adjust the hours. So you're going to do a big public announcement. I mean, um, not everybody watches these. Mm -hmm. Not everybody gets or reads the newsletter. How are we going to make sure that everybody knows that it's going to stop an hour earlier? You may get, and maybe it's only one or ten or even 20, but those people will be very upset if they come in. Um, and I'm not sure how this works. Didn't we close the polls at 9? Yes, we closed them. Yeah, so, so between 8 and 9 o'clock there was So the 8 to 9 is on one chart that's 91. So we're talking about 100 people. No, no. no. 
talking well, about one person. The one after, like that one. One. If, if. Each one of those bars represents an hour, right? Yeah. It, but if we close at, at nine, nobody, nobody votes after yeah. nine. So from the eight so to nine. So it's from eight, eight to nine. nine. <laughs> from eight to nine is. Uh, Plus one. On this first chart is 93 and one, 94. That's the way I read it anyway. I don't know. But even if it was 10, I'm just saying, if we don't get the word out correctly, then uh, people will be upset and say, oh my God, not only do you have to have a written right. ballot, but now you, now you, you know, I came at 8.15 and I wasn't allowed to vote. Well, I, I, I agree with you. We've got to work really hard to let everybody know. I mean, and we can plaster it all over the place, but I think you're reading these, these, these incorrectly. From, from 8 to 9 o'clock in 2018, only one person came in to vote. If you read the chart, if you start out at 6 a.m. and each bar is 6 yeah. to 7, 7 to 8, 8, that last bar of one person implies 9 to 10. Mm. He's right. Yeah, right. So it's it, it's closed at nine. So it it's re, you're really talking about the ones from eight to nine. And this is after the Haviland concert, which ends usually getting closer to eight. Uh, the Haviland concert, would, depending, yeah, it could be eight, eight fifteen. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have to shorten that concert. That's for sure. No. <laughs> 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 um. It was thirty-two minutes. <laughs> I don't think it's not one, but it doesn't well, I guess it doesn't we just need some clarity on the charts then. Yeah, yeah, we'll need clarity on the charts before we make this decision. Right. We have time. Yeah, we have time. If you just maybe here to there until one o'clock first <laughs> to certify the vote. Is, is the count though wait till the end and count, or is it as you go count? No, you can't do that. <coughs> we can't. You have start to wait till the, the end. Polls are yeah. closed at nine o'clock or whatever time we close. Okay. Yeah, as you go would have been great, but it's not legal. <laughs> Maybe by the time of the next board meeting, we'll find out what our what our counterparts are doing because we are being told that everyone's thinking about closing the polls early. So I would think that would be radio, flyer, our postcard. I mean, I know people don't read the newsletter; they may not look at our postcard, but radio, flyer. Uh, Certainly our school community, we can get out with school messenger, but you know we know that a lot of our voters are not on that. So if indeed there are 90 people and the chart is, and we find that out, uh, there's two decisions to make. One is do we still want to hazard that and or uh, if all the schools in Dutchess County are closing early, maybe there can be bigger campaigns. Um, I have the uh, uh, all the superintendents meeting, the countywide meeting tomorrow. I'll see if anybody's made a decision on closing polls earlier. So, okay. stay tuned. Okay, on to the one voter, if that's. I know. On to um, subcommittee reports. Any um, committees have met since the last meeting? I'm not sure I would call it a subcommittee, but uh, some of us did attend a um, presentation and comment session at Town Hall the other night in reference to the sewer uh, project that's uh, being proposed here in town. Uh, coming, um, just a, a few of the details. Uh, so I mean, we you know, it's probably for the last 40 or 50 years they've been talking about a sewer. I think in uh, in Hyde Park and. <laughs> I'd actually say that they're probably as close as I think they've ever been, and and hopefully, you know, I, I think it's, it'd be a great thing for the the uh, community. Um, they're looking at a sewer dis district that's yeah, basically going to go from through. somewhere of Market Street, maybe a little north of Market Street, um, all the way down to, and I wasn't clear whether it was going to get to the stop and shop or not. I, I, I looked at the map, but then I didn't pay well enough attention. But I thought it was supposed to meet the. They, when the hotel goes up there, no, supposedly get no, it. and I and I thought the same thing. Yeah, this is a this is a this is a plan. Okay. They looked at that and 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 I believe that they did a pretty exhaustive um, process of looking at a variety of different sizes of systems 
and where the system would connect to. They looked at, at, at connecting to the, uh, the system that's being built down at Bellafield. Their system is actually relatively small, so it would take a, a fair expansion of that. And to get to connect to that system, so there's two major parts to a, to a sewer plant or a sewer system. One is the plant itself, the treatment. The other part of it is the collection system. Mm -hmm. And if we were to run a system all the way down to Bellafield, that's a lot of pipe and a lot of road to go down through, and their point was through a lot of uh, federal property that wouldn't contribute to the system. So the idea is, you know, the tighter you can make your collection system, the more economical it is. So the system that they're planning right now will have, I think there's 109 uh, properties that would be part of that. Now there's not another 100, there's not 109 property owners, there's something less than that because many people own more than, you know, multiple, multiple properties. The other thing that was interesting to see was, you know, my, my idea was, well, a sewer main runs down the middle of the road. Well, that's not true either. What they're doing is they've, working with the topography and property lines, it's actually going to run off the road more toward the backs of some of the properties. Like I think actually in this property, if it's going to be just in the just outside the building here. It's going to come through uh, behind the properties that are facing Route 9, but, but closer to our building. And the reason for that is the cost of tearing up the road and the unknown of what's in the road and the disturbance to the community. They feel that this is a better solution. I, I hope they're going to not take up the sidewalk that they Put right, all those besides the side that they put walk, in. Yeah. Uh, so, so it was interesting. There's a lot of information. So, a, a couple of things that um, we found out that, that are beneficial to us is that so the, the the cost to the 109 properties of which we are we are two, this property and the um, Hyde Park, um, Park, Park Elementary property. We're considered a non-commercial property. The estimated cost is going to be about $4,800 per year as a fee to be part of the system. And then on top of that will be a fee for the usage. And the usage will be based on a water, whatever water. So if they take the water meter, they use a the multiplier, and that will be your usage fee. This is a flat fee per property. Um, and that's an average. Um, that they are projecting could drop down to as little as $2,800 a year because there's additional funding that will become available once the water or once the sewer district has been established. They can go after some additional funding. Uh, it's kind of interesting. You can't go after it until you establish the district. You can't establish the district until after the vote is held. So, um, Do you have to hook up? Uh, you know, I don't know whether I ever heard that answer, and I only thought about it after the fact. That I don't know that you have to, but you're going to pay the fee yeah. whether you hook up or not. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's an assessment to the property. You won't pay the usage fee, but you'll pay the assessment fee. Oh, wow. So. And what about the cost of, of hooking up? What about the cost of implementation? So what they call, they call that the plumbing cost. That is going to be borne by the property owner. So again, right, right. So wherever. Yeah. So you know, in our case, actually, for this property, it's going to come relatively close to the, to the building, or, you know, th right through our parking lot here. So, in some ways, that's good because it's relatively short. We can make a short connection to the line. It would be more expensive for us if it were out on Route Nine and we had to run the line all the way to Route Nine. So that is a cost that's going to be paid for by each individual property owner. So for Hyde Park Elementary, you had to cut through the road? Um, actually, I'm not sure. I'd have to look again. I think there's another. Yeah. Uh, basically, there was a main running up on both sides of Route 9 behind the yeah. properties. It, if, it, if I looked at it right, it seemed like for Hyde Park Elementary that it was going along the side of the building, like by the pla where the playground Oh, that's right, is. too. It was going through, yeah, because uh, um, Elliot okay. Sheldon made a comment that it was kind of going right through fun yeah, forest. Yeah. And now this is all schematic at this point and there's still a lot of details to be worked out. So yeah, it's relatively close to the building there yeah, as well. So there's going to be two. Yeah. Yep. And judging by there are plumbing issues that we have here and at HPE from time to time, a new sewer. Well, and, and I think actually that that's probably the situation with a lot, lot. of a lot of property owners. You know, it, it's it's a tough pill to to swallow for some property owners that you know may be struggling. Business, you know, businesses are struggling, um, but this is a good long-term investment for the community. I think. Um, 
I think for the school district, it has a great potential because it has it will bring in more development in the area. Hopefully, that it's managed properly and we get uh, you know that done properly. But the idea is that assessments should come up. We should see assessments in this in this corridor come up. Um, probably larger businesses, uh, higher density, could be residential, could be commercial. Um, so there's, I think there's good potential. Um, based on the schedule that they have in place right now, um, system could be up and running somewhere in the 2024 range. And that's when that fee, from a budgeting standpoint, that's when we would need to uh, plan for uh, mm -hmm. uh, putting that into the budget. Um, when do they anticipate the vote? And it's just the, the 109 vote, property voters it's to just, vote. Yeah, and the vote's going to be, was it May? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, I have it here. Okay. I pulled up their presentation. So the vote w would be June 16th. Uh, June. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, and they do have a hearing scheduled in April, April 6th. So, and it's interesting, I mean, just as a matter of understanding, so there's 109 properties. If you're a property owner of more than one property, you still only yeah. get one vote. Right. So we will get one vote even though we have two properties. And since we're a school district, it'll be a little different for us. We'll need to have a resolution that the board approves and authorizing someone to cast the vote. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you can think of? <laughs> There was some concern over the, the plant itself is going to be off Market Street as you're going east on Market, just before you get to the stream, before you cross the bridge, there'll be a roadway that'll turn off to the right there and the and the sewer plant will be in that general area yeah. somewhere. There were concerns by local property owners of the uh, odors that may be emitted from the sewer treatment plant. Um, I can tell you I've been in some modern sewer treatment plants when you're near them there's no smell because the plants are all contained. They're not, these are not big concrete pits like what you've, you can envision. These are all in, uh, enclosed inside of a building. Any air that leaves the building is actually treated uh, and brought back into the system. So um, it's down by Marist. That's the old style that's system. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that is the old potent. style system. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Could I just add, I, when I pulled up the presentation, I see it's between Linden Lane and Terwilliger Road. I think Terwilliger is where... Terwilliger, yeah, is Terwilliger is just this side of... Uh, just, okay. before, just before the... Um, Stop the heading south, before the drive-in. Yeah. Oh, it's before that. Terwilliger Lane I think it's right far, there, a little bit the, farther the down. Hotel. That's Isn't it near the... Lane that goes oh, that's true. Well, I thought Terwilliger was further down. Okay. Maybe near the dry cleaner. Okay. Then, yes, that is a board from the Community Relations Committee. So it was a board report, or subcommittee report, oh. just saying. It wasn't really a committee, but it was. Yeah. We were there. Government relations, that's it. Government relations. That's Government, relations. Government relations. Sometimes relations. it's just one person on those. Uh -huh. It's not always a. Yeah. Okay, moving on. I'll mm -hmm. see where we Right. Okay, on to consent agenda. Can I have a motion for the consent agenda? I move. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I'd just like to wish uh, Pat Jacko a uh, happy retirement. She's been with us since 2002. She's a school nurse at North Park, and, and she's been lovely to work with and great for our kids. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. We have a motion for 11.1, .1, special education placements. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. We have a motion for 11.2, first consideration of policies requiring annual review. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. We have a motion for 11.3, bid award, transportation. So moved. A second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. 
A motion for 11.4 HPTA Memorandum of Agreement Field Trip Chaperones. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Slow there. <laughs> yeah, motion for 11.5. You guys can't sit next to each other. <laughs> Motion 11 for 11.5, health and welfare services provided to the High Park Central School District students. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. We have a motion for 11.6, pilot payment in lieu of taxes for Cream Street Solar, LLC. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. We have a motion for 11.7, vendor, St. Peter's, 2019-2020. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. We have a motion for 11.8, vendor, e -local link. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I just let right. Who who moved? Who seconded? I I was the mover. <laughs> and I second. <laughs> and I just wanted to say that that is the contract for those of you who were who are on the district leadership team, and we watched the sample videos. Um, that are done for promotional and branding your school district. So that begins the process. Uh, we will have the filming on May 1st. Doug, I'm going to ask if we could get a shot of you reading. It is a Friday over at Violet Avenue. Uh, we'll certainly try and get some district leadership team and definitely some students, Rachel. We're going to be looking for students. Coding competition. <laughs> On a coding competition? You're doing STEM stuff? Oh no. Well, okay. Well, I think we got a few more students we could try and find. But um, we're really s excited about this. The production for this same quality video, uh, Community Promotional Vehicles, is already underway for the Dutchess County government. And what we get is not only a promotional video for our school district, this is to say who we are. Are. And the district leadership team has been working over the course of a year and a half to talk about what are our values and who we are. And we wrote that we finished the script for the most part with some tweaking, and this company will help finish the script. We finished the script at the last district leadership team meeting. So uh, I talked with the production manager, so they'll, they'll come in, they'll get our. Um, Shots, what What was it, Ed? Our roots in the, our, ow. You can't remember now either. It was, um, yeah. Roots in the. Past. Roots in the past. Past and. and eyes on the future. Eyes on the future. Where there were, it was just, there was some really, <laughs> so we're really ex excited about this. The other thing is that when you click on Dutchess County, so anybody coming to the Dutchess County area, they'll see the Dutchess County video and then they'll be able to click on the Hyde Park schools. And, <coughs> and I know we are, uh, there's conversations going on with maybe some of the other school districts, but the, we're the first one that will have a contract. So uh, we'll be um, they're anticipating the Dutchess County government link finishing in May, and ours should be finished uh, in June. So that will be nice. It's a, it's. Um, there are sample videos from other communities around the state that have done it. It's high quality, uh, so we're really excited about that. So just a plug for. Our and we've had a lot of discussion about the, the school district image, and I think this will go a long way to help promote a, a really good positive look at what we what we do and who we are any other discussion all those in favor motion carries can I have a motion for 11.9 vendor Colleen Bishop lifeguard so moved second any discussion all those in favor motion carries 
Okay, can I have a motion for second public participation? Wait. Wait. No, 11.10. Adjustment. Oh, yes, 11.10. I forgot to write that down. <laughs> can I have a motion for 11.10? Resignation adjustment. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay, now can I have a motion for second public participation? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. If anyone would like to address the board, for second public participation time limit is one minute per person. Oh. Seeing none, public participation is now closed. There is no other matters deemed necessary by the board. There is no need for a second executive session. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. We're now adjourned. <coughs> Thank you guys for coming. <laughs>